Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In a previous episode, we were messing around with this old surplus telescope that I got in an auction along with some other broken telescope parts. And this one did not come with a mount. So last time I made one using this security camera aiming system, and that didn't work very well. It's just, it's not strong enough to hold up the weight of that scope, and it's too sloppy. It wiggles around, and it doesn't really track correctly. So it's really hard to point at a star, and once you've got it pointed at anything, it doesn't hold still. So we're going to ditch this, and we're going to go with something else. Now I've been trying to come up with all kinds of harebrained schemes for how to make a counterbalance system to go on that original tripod. Been digging around the garage and finding some spring-loaded mount thingies and random scrap metal what's -its and strange sort of steampunk junk that wouldn't really be strong enough either. So what if instead of doing any of that, we went a couple steps simpler? There exists something called a Dobsonian telescope mount, which is essentially a couple boxes made out of plywood. This is a terrible photocopy of an old article about how to build one. I'll throw up a Wikipedia photo or something to illustrate what I'm talking about. So the Dobsonian mount is essentially just a bunch of plywood cutouts put together into a couple different boxes. I don't think I have any full sheets of plywood since those are expensive, but I have lots of scraps and so I think we can make this out of spare bits. So a funny thing happened on the way to the hardware store looking for more parts for this telescope. I stopped at Axeman Surplus without anything specific I was looking for and naturally I found all kinds of telescope related things like these eyepieces and some turntable base things and all kinds of other stuff that I don't necessarily know what to do with but I bought it anyway. Alright, so we've got our Dobsonian telescope mount all built, functional, and we've got everything painted so it actually looks a little bit nicer. And then as a bonus, I fixed up the second largest telescope that I got from that same auction, found enough spare parts to make it work. We've got a little uh, aiming scope here that I found somewhere. I've got some eyepieces from Axeman that fit in here. And then we reused the base from the bigger Criterion scope which didn't actually work all that well without its equatorial mount. But this scope is a little bit lighter, so it works as just a very simple azimuth elevation mount with some wing nuts and whatnot. So, we've got uh, two telescopes out of the three that I originally got from that auction. The third one, I think, is beyond saving. It's missing the secondary mirror, it's missing some other parts, and I think it's just kind of uh, spare parts at the moment here. So, I also went online and picked up some telescope toys. I've got a collimation or adjustment tool. I've got a cell phone mount so I can uh, take better pictures, hopefully. And then we've got a moon filter so we can look at the moon without uh, all that extra light and just ruining our night vision. 
So this collimation tool works by shooting a laser down through the secondary mirror onto the primary mirror, back up through the secondary mirror, and back to this little target here. The idea being, if all the mirrors are aligned correctly, the laser will be in the center of this little target. And we can see it's, it's kind of close, but it's not great. Now I could adjust this without the laser just by looking in here and adjusting the mirror, but with a telescope this big it really takes two people to do that. And theoretically I might have to do this every time I set up the telescope, because things change with temperature and transportation and the mirrors will get out of alignment eventually. So it's nice to have this little dingus that lets me do it single-handedly. With this collimation tool in place, I can be at the back of the scope looking at the target while I adjust my mirror. Now that the mirrors are adjusted, I'm going to try to adjust my little finder scope so that it's actually looking where the main telescope is looking. Okay, we should be all set up for some stargazing tonight. That's assuming the weather cooperates. And the way things are looking now, we might have to wait a few days. Looking at the recent downloads from my weather satellite receiver, it's pretty cloudy. Now that it's a nice clear night, we can finally show off another feature that I've added to this telescope. That's right, we now have a laser sight on the scope. Now obviously this is something we have to be a little careful with. We don't want to ruin our night vision, we definitely don't want to look directly at the laser, and we can't use this if there are any planes in the area, so it's not something I'm going to use all the time. However, it does seem to help to aim the thing at planets or stars. There we've got Jupiter and some of its moons. You can almost see some cloud formations on Jupiter's surface. Alright, let's try Saturn again. There's Mars. Alright, so the Dobsonian mount on the big scope is definitely an improvement over that old mount that I had. I'm able to see Jupiter, Saturn, Mars. It's uh, working pretty well. I'm a little disappointed in my other scope. It's uh, not focusing very well. I think I still have the wrong eyepiece. I'm also pretty disappointed in my cell phone photography mount. This thing's kind of junk. It's really hard to uh, focus in. It's really hard to get it aligned. Um, yeah, this thing's kind of a gimmicky piece of junk. I probably won't be using it. Honestly, this camera that I'm filming with right now is the best thing that I've used so far for getting images of the planets. I can just hold it up to the eyepiece and I can even zoom in pretty far and provide a lot more magnification than the eyepiece by itself. I think if I make a mount for this camera to pop into those telescopes, this thing would be the best for astrophotography or astrovideography. However, I think we're going to wrap things up here. It's about 2 a.m. I'm probably keeping the neighbors awake. Everyone's wondering what I'm doing out here with this junk. So we're going to stop this video here. Maybe we'll come back to these one more time. I might try to do something with my uh, handy cam here to attach to those, which means I'll have to film the video with something else. And then I would still like to take these out to Sandland, out away from the city where there's darker skies, and I have a better chance of actually seeing a little bit more. Tune in to see if we do any of that. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.